guys, it's Kelly and I'm here to do my second quarterly wrap up of 2016. These will be all the books that I read in a April, May and June, getting that right. And strangely enough, I only read 10 and I also only read 10 in January, February and March. And usually I read more than this. I'm not having a good year in terms of the amount of reading, but in terms of like discoveries of good books, it's still going on because I started off April with A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. I don't think you need me to go into this too much. It's the sequel to A Court of Thorns and Roses, which was loosely a Beauty and the Beast retelling. This doesn't appear to be a retelling of anything. It's just plain awesome. I I gave it a 4 out of 5 on Goodreads, but it's a 4.5 out of 5 in my heart. I did find certain descriptions repetitive, certain phrases repetitive, but it was so addictive. I devoured it. Cannot wait to read more. I am, I am all about Reese. Feyre is a lucky girl. Then I moved on, worried that I was going to be left in a book funk. I picked up uh, The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin and it's a testament to how good this is that it, it carried me through and I did not ever dip into a funk. I gave this one also 4 out of 5 on Goodreads but it's a 4.5 out of 5 in my heart. Um, there were moments where I wanted the pacing to... It's like there were moments where I wanted the pacing to increase but I also understood at the same time that it was responsible for maintaining that sort of haunting atmosphere. This, this is very mysterious and there are revelations at the end of it that made me want to go straight to the next book but I, I withheld because there's so much other stuff I need to read. This is the story of Mara Dyer who spends the night in an, in an abandoned asylum with uh, three of her friends. Uh, as kind of like a rites of passage thing. She then wakes up in the hospital with no memory of what happened but her three friends died in the collapse of the asylum and her whole family relocates to help her deal with this. She is still amnesiac, she is seeing things and kind of hearing things and just um, she seems to be losing her mind and her mother who is a psychiatrist is seconds from putting her on medication. It's awesome, and also got quite a nice romance in it that I was not expecting. Like, Noah Shaw, yes, I, I am for that, but it also, it's quite, um, when I say it's quite an adult romance, I'm, romance, I mean it in the way that it's like a little bit cynical, it's a little bit the way teenagers actually would be with each other, um, although it does develop into more. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Then my first 5 out of 5 read for this quarter was The Winner's Kiss by Marie Rutkowski. I'm all about this trilogy. This is the third and final book in the Winner's Curse trilogy and I remember at the end of the first or second book I described the plot machinations in this as being Shakespearean and lo and behold I think for this book I opened up to the author bio and it says uh, the author teaches Shakespeare at Brooklyn College. So that makes utter sense. It is completely masterful. Like, look at all these flags. These were just incredible expressions dotted throughout this book. And though I've read good books like The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer, The Court of Mist and Fury, those were amazing. This had the plot and the writing to the nth degree. I so thoroughly recommend this series. It's very, uh, very military, very political, which I know sounds a bit dry, but you get caught up in the web that these characters are weaving and it's like, oh my god, how are you going to come through this? And also, you're slightly ahead of them, so when you can see them coming for a, heading for a fall, you're like, oh my god! Um, like, I, I'm, I'm getting worked up just remembering this book. It did start off with, uh, like, an an amnesiac phase and I sort of thought really you're gonna do that but I've never seen it done so well it was heartbreaking um really truly pick up the winner's curse and read this trilogy she, this woman is special love next as research for something I'm writing I read the wild swans by Jackie Morris this is a very um illustrated um fairy tale retelling about the is it the six swans like the the Grimm's fairy tale about the well I've heard it told about six swans and I've heard it told about eleven swans basically uh, this sister has to reverse a spell placed on her brothers who have been turned into swans by the evil stepmother um, this 
was a little bit disappointing. What did I give it? I think I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Um, it's kind of similar to another um, illustrated book I'm going to show you in that the illustrations surpassed the story. But I still enjoyed it. I, I, it will still be useful to me when it comes to writing my own. Next, I don't have a physical copy of this, I listened to it on audiobook, it is The Success Principles by Jack Canfield, and I left this unrated because I kind of don't think I was the intended audience. I, I'm not opposed to a little bit of self-development, which I, and I thought this would apply to me beyond the sort of business finance realm, but I did find it quite business finance heavy, more than just everyday life, although there was some of that too. It just, it's very long, I think it's like 700 pages, so it took me quite a while to listen to it, and I don't think it's one of those ones that I would take off the shelf and revisit passages. It was, I'm sure, very useful if you're the correct audience, but I, um, I wasn't. So, make of that what you will. Next, I read, again as research, and another retelling of that legend of the swans, is A Wild Swan by Michael Cunningham. Um, this is a collection of short stories, only one of which is about the swan fairy tale. There's also Hansel and Gretel, which is very dark. There's Rapunzel, which was quite sad. Um, um, what else was there? Oh, there was like the legend of the monkey paw. I thought I think that's more of like a horror tale from Oh, and Jack and the Beanstalk. These are all fairy tales told with zero sentimentality, often grotesque, but um very like I really admire people who can get in a proper um landscape of story arcs into a short story because I don't have that skill. I need the, you know, I need the 80,000 words to be able to spin that out. But Michael Cunningham, who also wrote The Hours, um, he can do that and more and I was very impressed. And as I was saying before the camera cut out, I will probably reread some of these stories. I, I don't have like a, a heartfelt attachment to it, but there's a lot of admiration for it and it did surprise me and it's nice to be surprised. So um, if you like short stories and if you like beautiful books, I mean look at this, you've got this matte cream cover with like a, a wing relief. Um, uh, oh yeah, and the illustrator, I forget the illustrator's name. There you go. That's the, that's the M papers and then just a plain. Oh, but I did like this. The spine is just um, glossy black text. It has like no relief whatsoever. It's pretty cool. The illustrator is Yuko Shimizu and they are quite lovely, the illustrations in this. Um, um, dark but beautiful. Oh, and I just love the typography. Oh, there's one from the monkey's paw. And I just love, I love books that have this typographical first letter at the beginning of a new chapter or story. I um, love it. Uh, I, I, surprising, I surprised myself with how much I enjoyed this one. And it has kind of spurred me on to pick up more short stories. Then, because one of the, well, because the most anticipated film for me of this year is The Legend of Tarzan, I read the uh, Tarzan of the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This book also includes The Return of Tarzan, which I didn't read, so I only read like half of this. This is what I would call a trashy classic. It is pulp fiction, but it's so good. Like, it's so good. I mean. People who know far better than I say that the jungle descriptions uh, are not entirely accurate, but I didn't know and I didn't care. I really enjoyed this. I do intend to read the next one when I can. And also the, the Penguin Cloud editions. I also, have, um, I also have Jane Austen's Persuasion here. And they're just so nice. They feel 
They feel a bit like leather and they're more substantial than a paperback but not so unwieldy as a hardback. I love them and they've got little quotes from within each book on the front, sort of embedded. Oh, and I love the colour of this one, gorgeous green colour. And then the end paper. Ah, oh, this was really good. If, if you would like to read um, a classic but you're a bit intimidated by the normal ones, just go for this. This is fun. I really enjoyed it. I still haven't seen the film though and I uh, cannot wait. Next, I listened to The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. What did I give this? Ah, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 on Goodreads, but I think it's a 3.5 in my heart, my head, whatever I'm deciding with here. I, the language is beautiful, but I think it probably would have struck me more if I had read rather than listened to it. I just, the characters, the characters were so vapid. And I think that was probably the way they were meant to be, but because they were so vapid, I didn't really understand the, the pull towards them. Like, Daisy was... <sighs> I liked Gatsby. I liked Nick. I, I kind of liked Jordan in the way, because she was quite honest about who and what she was, and she was quite a, an interesting, beautiful monster, we'll say. Um, but the rest were just so... Um, like self-sabotaging. I just, uh... Maybe I'll reread this one day. It's very short. Again, it's another classic to, to attempt if you're a bit frightened of classics. It is easy to read, beautifully written. Not my favourite classic, however. Um, then, the only other five out, five out of five read I read this quarter was Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. This is a collection of poetry divided into, I think, four chapters. The hurting, the loving, the breaking, the healing. It covers, you know, love, loss, abuse, um, femininity. I loved this. Um, on the back of reading this, I wrote, I think, five or six poems in one day, and I've got all these others swimming in my head, and I don't write poetry, you know, I, I don't write poetry. I am a writer, but this is new to me, and something that can... Like, I didn't even... I had to stop before the last couple of pages so that I could get those out of me. This was so inspiring, and as I've been saying about the classics, if you're a little threatened by poetry, as I often am, to be honest, this is so digestible, it's so easy, it's so friendly. Like, it wants you to understand, and it helps you by just not covering anything. It doesn't even try to be pretty sometimes. It just tells you what it is. Um, uh, she also does little sort of pen and ink illustrations for some of them and what I've learned from this actually is how she sort of puts the, the title as it were of, of some of the poems underneath, some of them are untitled and that title becomes like a parting shot or just a part of the poem, kind of like the drop mic at the end. I love them and I'm, this is still so fresh for me that I want to stop filming this right now so I can read this. I will absolutely buy anything else this lady writes. I have also followed her on Instagram. And I am intending to put up some of my own poetry on my, my Instagram, inspired by her. So, let's, like, I hope I don't back out of that because you have to be kind of brave um, to write like she does. The final book I read is The Fox and the Star by Coralie Bickford Smith. This is, again, as I said when I was talking about the wild swans, the, the graphics in this is just stunning. The way this story is told, the placement of text, the text boxes, the choice of when to use colour and when not, the, like, the geometry of the graphic design, 
everything visual in this book is perfection. It's easily five out of five. It's, it is perfection. The story about a fox who lives his life by the light of his guiding star and then one day he wakes up and that star is gone and then he goes on a quest to find star and finds what he finds at the end, whatever that means. The story is just rubbish. I'm gonna go come out and say that the story is rubbish. This to me is a perfect example of someone with a visual mind who had the plates, like she saw these visuals. She wanted to do these visuals and she just tried to pin the text on it afterwards. And you can't do that because the text suffers. If you're a book lover, I still, I still say go out and get this book. I think I've showed you that one because it's so beautiful. And I will keep this, I will keep looking at this, but as a story, as a story, honestly, probably one out of five stars. That is all I have to say about the books I read in, why is, this so, why is this so difficult? April, May and June. Hopefully I will do better in this third quarter. We're already halfway through the year. Um, and to be honest, I am already halfway through about three or four books at the moment because I'm being so unfaithful uh, to each book. But um, hopefully it will be better. See you then. Comment below if you've read any of these. Please follow me on Instagram, Twitter, at Boo Kelly Jones. And um, yeah, what have you been reading? Let me know down below. Let me know down below. I'm going to go. Bye.